I have finally decided that DFDB recognition is better than my previous system, and today I'm going to show you how to use it. So, the DFDB starts with recognizing, uh, comparing the sticker right here on FU with this F center. And we have to check whether they're matching or not. So in here, in this case, I'm on my right hand, they're matching. And over here on the left, they're not matching. And um, you'll notice that this is not actually a DFDB edge. This is actually a, a yellow edge. And normally DFDB in this case would be white over here. And that's one of the biggest problems that people have with DFDB is they think that you actually have to look at DFDB. But you can look at either DFDB or the yellow edges or the other, the other set of edges. And so... That's one distinction I think, or I hope that people can make with this video. So for this first one, where it is matching, what we do is we do need to watch where this other edge is, but essentially we'll just insert our uh, UL, UR edges, like normal, and then we'll bring this to where it was. So we'll bring it to the front. So since they're, since it's matching, we bring this to the front, uh, the other the other edge of its kind to the front. And then we're going to raise the dot. Now, in case you didn't watch my last video, I'll explain what this means. There's three colors on top. Two of them are the same, and one of them is different. This is the dot, because it's the one that's different. So we do an M move that will keep this in the U layer, and essentially set these two in the bottom two layers, and this one in the top layer. And then we do a U2, and from there, it should be pretty simple. Either, either you raise the dot again, or you have to... Um, just adjust the middle slice like I did there. We also have the possibility that they don't match. And for this, there's actually two cases, so let me bring out a second cube. All right, I've brought out my second cube now, so you can see that, and I'll show you that in a moment. But for here, uh, this is the, we'll check these, and we see they're not matching. And so we're gonna insert our UOUR as we have to, and then we're gonna align the corners. That's our first step. If they're not matching, we just align the corners, but watch where it's other edge, it's paired edge. So like this is a yellow edge and this is it's other the other yellow edge. So these two are connected, they're friends, you could say. Um, so we're just going to watch that one now. And if it goes to the back like this, then we're going to have to do an M2 and a U2 before we can raise the dot and see here when I raise the dot, it's going to be an M prime. That'll put these two in the bottom and this one still in the top layer and a U2, like so. And then here, we also have a non-matching centers case, right? That's not matching. And so we'll do an M2 and we'll align the corners. But this time it came to the front. And so if it comes to the front, then you're going to raise the dot immediately without doing the M2 and the U2 beforehand. So here we'll raise the dot. And in this case, we actually have to raise the dot a second time. As you can see, it's not quite finished yet. Now, as you can see, this is already so much simpler than my system, and it works exactly the same for misoriented centers. In fact, I'll do a couple examples of that at the end, but I'm not going to go into detail about how to do it because, as I said, it is exactly the same, which is awesome. Now, there is a slight change for EOBF, which is where you insert the front and UFUB edges instead of the ULUR edges, and um, I'll cover that right now. Now, for EOBF, everything works exactly the same um, as far as, like, if the center and if they're not matching and they're opposite, like this, which is what we're used to seeing, right? This would be a EOLR case, right? No, this is still an EOBF case, but they're opposite. And sometimes they'll be the matching as well, so you can use those, and they'll be exactly the same. But occasionally you'll get an adjacent like this, which is uh, something we have to come up with new rules for. And the rules for these ones are exactly the same every time, which is very nice. And so, here's how it works. First, we insert EOBF, but we align it so that always, so that the matching edge, so this is the other yellow edge, comes to the front. We don't ever align uh, set, uh, corners a specific way because these are a U2 way, which, like, what does that do? So, we always bring this edge to the front, the matching edge, and then we can raise the dot. And from here, you're going to notice we have three different colors here, which is not what you're used to, and that's because it's EOBF. But if you look here at these corners and this edge here, you'll see that they're exactly the same, and that's not how we want it if we're going to insert this. 
So we could insert it, but then that would be opposites, and that wouldn't be correct. So we bring it to the bottom layer and do a U2 to align it so that we can actually insert these edges, which were actually UL UR edges, which is why it makes it easy to think about it this way. So you'll see these are the same, which means we have to turn the center, the corners the other way with a U2, and then we insert them and align uh, AUF. For this case, it's going to be a little different, but we're still going to bring it to the front. And now it's going to look just like a normal three cycle, actually. So we're going to raise the dot, and here we can raise the dot again. That's how you do it. And as you can see, it's a lot simpler, right? Uh, that's it. I'll go into some examples. All right. Example one, it looks like we have a matching uh, case because these are the same, green and green. So I will insert, and this is the other white edge, and I will bring that to the front. And then I raise the dot, and it looks like we just have to adjust the M slice like that. In our next example, uh, they're not matching. It looks like they're opposite, as one's blue and the center is green, these two centers here. So we will solve the corners, and we see this comes to the front. And so that means that we just raise the dot immediately. If it goes to the back, that's when you would do the M2 and U2. Ooh, now we have misoriented centers, which it looks quite scary, but it's actually just as simple. We check these two, we see they're opposite, so we have a non-matching case. And so we'll solve the corners and watch where the blue edge goes, right? Because this one was blue. And so this edge that we just checked was also blue. We see the blue edge goes to the back, so we have to do an M2 and a U2 before we can raise the dot. And now we just have to uh, adjust the middle slice with an M2. I did that fancy blind M2 just for you guys. All right, and so here we see we have an adjacent case. Uh, so we know we have EOBF in this case. We'll insert and we bring the other one to the front always. We raise the dot, and in this case we have that uh, zigzag kind of pattern which we always know means bring this edge to the bottom. And then we can do a U2 and insert the ULUR edges correctly. Hey, hey, you gotta see this, you gotta see this. I've got my own Discord server. Link in the description, guys, you should join. As you can see, DFDB recognition is significantly easier than Easy4C and BU. I hope it helps you in your Roo journey. Godspeed.